Are you passionate about architectural and structural design? If you are looking to take your skills to the next level, then this lecture is for you. Join me for an exciting 10 minutes lecture on the essential tools for scheme and concept design of steel buildings. From structural framing and load path to loading and initial member sizing, we will deep dive into the techniques that professionals use to bring their vision to life. This is part 28 of the 30 part series on steel design. Whether you are a civil engineering student or a structural engineer, this lecture is for you. Hey friends, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Concept and scheme design is divided into these four lectures and tutorials. Tools for concept design is the second lecture in series of concept and scheme design. In this lecture, I will talk about two things, tools for concept design and tools for scheme design. I'm going to talk about what does it mean by concept design and what are the tools available for concept design how do you say that okay these things are related to concept design and i have divided them into itemized headings so that it becomes easier for you to understand what is required in concept design the tools for conceptual design so what do we do for conceptual design so so initially, my first step will be a structural grid, which means that if a plot is given to me, so if this is the plot, if this is 30 meter, if this is 40 meter, how do I decide where to put my columns and how do I decide about beams? So how do I decide the position of columns? So normally the first thing to start with is to start at the corners of the plot and then spacing of these columns depending on the constraints and where are my core positions? Your course could be your lift core as well. So it could be L-shaped shear wall, which is around your lift. So where do you position that? So floor framing, what kind of slab you're going to use? what kind of beams are you going to use and where you're going to use your bracing. So this is what we decide in framing as well. Then load paths, gravity and lateral load paths are decided in concept design as well. And then material specification, what steel grade you're going to use, what material properties you're going to use. And I'm going to cover these things step by step. The fifth step will be initial sizing of the steel elements. And how do we do it? Now we do this based on span to depth ratios and these span to depth ratios are developed based on previous case studies, based on rule of thumb. So they are not the definite things, they are rule of thumb. They have been used by various designers, various engineers and we benefit from them. In this all concept design, the role of design code like Eurocode 3 or 4 is really minimal. It is just about understanding how a building works and how loads are transferred and how do we work out loading and how do we carry out initial sizing. The key element in concept and scheme design is a structural engineer's pocket book. Make this book your friend. It will give you pretty much anything about structural engineering. It will give you load to span ratios. Uh, this is going to be very useful. It will give you kind of initial thoughts about how do we carry out small calculations. Have a look at this book, Structural Engineer's Pocket Book. It's extremely useful. And I will be referring to this book quite often in my presentation. For framing, we use either composite slabs and the depth is normally between 130 to 150 millimeter. Typically, they are fine for three to four meter span. This is the spacing between secondary beams. If you have this grid, so this is the spacing between your secondary beams. If this is spacing is say three meter to four meter, normally these composite slabs are fine. And then we have a choice of either using composite slab where we will have primary secondary beam configuration or we could use this pre-cost auto slab where its depth can range from 150 to 450 and the spans are between 4.5 to 18 meter. This is common for long roofs or factories. And third one is floor grids. Remember that secondary beams are about 50% longer than primary beams. The grids of six by nine meters are common. So if I say that this is six meter and this is nine meter, 
So these kind of grids are very common. But we tend to have larger grids, 7.5 by 12 are preferred. So if you have a grid like this, if you have three beams, the spacing between these beams is 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5. And here, the spacing is 12 meters. So try to fit your grid sizes into these. These are very common ones. Although, I mean, it will be dictated by various other requirements. Then we have these material properties. So elastic modulus is 210 GPA for steel. Shield distress is typically for plates, deflection control beams, it's typically 275 for columns. For beams, normally we use S275 steel. For columns and structure hollow sections, normally we use a little bit of higher steel in the UK. Although, I mean, 460 is becoming common these days. One thing you have to keep in mind is reduction factor for buckling or compression, which is from 0.7 to 0.8. I mean, sometimes we use as 0.6 as well. So this is the reduction factor for compression that we will use because if you have a long column, it will have less load as compared to short one. Finally, this is initial sizing of the elements. How do you decide about a member when you don't have any calculations? How do you estimate? So for primary beams or trusses, the typical span is 4 to 10. After 12 meter, it becomes really uneconomic. Then, then we use trusses or something. The beam depth is a span over 10 or a span over 15. This is for primary beams. And for secondary beams or trusses with distributed load, we have 4 to 12 meter span and span over depth ratio or beam depth can be found out by span over 15 to span over 25. We have this costellated beams, we have these plate girders. In plate girders, we decided about its depth by using this ratio L over 10. And they can typically span between 10 to 30 meter. And then you have different girders and you have this parallel cord roof trusses. For roof trusses, again, you have this span to depth ratio. If size of your beam is 4, then you use the lower limit. Then what do you use for beams? I mean, you can use primary secondary beam configuration, which is here, you can see on your left. And then you can use plate girders. You can see here, castellated beams are shown here, trusses, and then your moment frames, again, some trusses. These are the sections can be used. Rules of thumb for composite structures. Normally, we design secondary beams as steel concrete composite beams. So for, for them, the span to depth ratios are different. A span over 19, a span over 23. Now columns. For buildings up to two to three stories high, spans up to seven meter, we normally use 203 by 203 column. And for buildings up to five stories high, we use 253 column. And for buildings up to eight stories, we use 305 universal column and buildings from 8 to 12 stories, we use this 354 universal column. And this is a kind of rule of thumb that if you have a small building, then you use a smaller column. Again, this rule of thumb, it comes from this structural engineer's pocket book, which does not follow any Euro code, to be honest. They say Euro codes, but these provisions are generic. So uh, tools for schematic design. There are six steps for scheme design, and I would like you to focus on these things. First is loading. How do you establish loading? Now, you saw that in concept design, it was about establishing the size and position of columns and beams based on span to depth ratio. So if I define concept design in a word, then I would say I would establish the beams and column size based on span to depth ratio. So this is concept design. In scheme design, we go a little further. We work out loading. In concept design, we did not work out loading. In scheme design, we work out loads. So we work out floor loads, we work out finishes, we work out fire rating. And then we decide about slabs, what kind of slab you're going to use, either composite or precast holoco slab. And then we decide about beams as well. Are you going to use primary secondary beam configuration or main entire beam configuration? And fourth, we decide about the column. We choose from critical column, which is taking most load. Then other members as well. We decide about trusses and bracing. And other consideration like opening and beams, connection, detailing, fire, and other, other things. So these all are decided in scheme design. So the first step is loading. So we have to establish flow loads based on use. So if it is office, normally we take 2.5 kilonewton per meter square. 
And then we make adequate estimates about the finishes. So one to two kilonewton per meter square. And then we establish the fire rating for building regulations. They are different in different countries. In the UK, it is approved document B. So from here for offices using these categories, again, this has been taken from a structural engineer's pocketbook. Now here we can establish fire rating. Typically, it is between 60 to 90 minutes for low and medium rise buildings. And then secondly, we, we decide about composite slab. Now, how do we decide about composite slab? We go to load span tables of the decking manufacturers. Once we have established fire rating for 90 minutes fire rating, if the load is five kilonewton per meter square, this is the service load or this is the imposed load. Its spanning capability is 3.4 meter. The depth of the slab could be 130. And this is the mesh that is going to be used. And same is the case with hollow core slabs. If the load that is coming on my slab is four kilonewton per meter square, then if the span which I have is nine, I can say that I can use this 250 millimeter deep hollow core slab, which has a spanning capability of 9.93 meter. This has to be equal or higher than the span that you're using. This is how you decide about these slabs. You just size these slabs. You actually do not design these slabs. And then you decide about non-composite beams. So secondary beams will have line loads or UDL. This is how you work out its moment. And primaries will have point load. So if you have one point load, then you have very simple formula for two point loads. Again, the formula for deflection and moment, these are given. And third step is non-composite beams. If you're deciding to use beams as non-composite for secondary beams, if you have this formula over here, make I as your subject in this deflection equation and then find out I. Obviously other things are already known. Length is known, load is known, and E is known as well. Maximum deflection you can assume is span over 360. Then you can work out I from there. So once you have got I, then go to Tata Steel Blue Book, then find out the one which can have this kind of I. Alternatively, you can use this BCSA tool to work out the buckling moment. For composite beams, you can't use the section table. You just have to go to this tool to work out its capacity. This table is for lightweight concrete if you're using it as a composite beam. Just to clarify, secondary beams can be designed as non-composite or they can be designed as composite beams. If you decide to design it as composite beams, you will have more economy. So the section sizes are going to be reduced. And the fourth step is for columns. So simply work out the tributary area of the column and work out load and then compare it with the loading capacity section table. Or you could use this VCSA tool to work out the capacity. And then other considerations, if you have trusses or bracings, simply idealize a truss like a beam, estimate the depth of the truss from span to depth ratios, and then calculate the moment and find the chord forces from this moment is equal to force times depth. You already have depth, then you can find out the force. Once you have got the force, then simply you can work out loading in the bottom and top chord. Then get I from parallel axis theorem, assuming top and bottom chords have the same area, and then calculate deflection for the beam using 5W L power 4 over 384 EI. This is the formula for uniformly distributed loads. And sixth and final step is other considerations where you have opening in the beams, where you have connection details, where you have fireproofing, and the cost. These are very important resources, structural engineers, pocketbook, steel design as manual, structural design to your code. But I feel that this will just give you the itemized provisions of the code. And then other Steel Construction Institute guides, these are available here. So you can always download them. A lot of them are free. And then some other resources. So have a look at them.